The official 2024 Summer Outlook is here, and with La Nina forecasted to return, what does that mean for your summer? Will we see scorching hot temperatures? And what does that mean for the tropics? I'll let you know coming up next. Everybody and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski, making a difference one subscriber at a time. And before we get started, I'd like to first thank all my subscribers out there. And if you're new to the channel and you've not yet subscribed, please consider it. Just hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as it really does help with trying to grow the channel. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the tropics. We're talking about the upcoming summer season. So let's go ahead and talk about what you need to know for this edition. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the latest on El Nino and how we're expecting things to kind of transition into Pacific, and that's going to have an impact on the summer outlook. And we'll take a look at the forecast as well as we go into La Nina that's being forecasted later this year. We'll look at the latest hot up the presses summer outlook that's out today. This will include a look at the temperatures across the country as well as the outlook on the precipitation as well. And then finally, we'll look at the tropical concerns. We'll take the latest look as far as what's expected as far as the number of storms expected in the Atlantic as we head into the tropical season for 2024. So we have plenty to talk about, plenty to get into for this edition. So let's go ahead first and take a look at the latest on El Nino. So we're gonna first be taking a look here at the sea surface anomaly map here. And this kind of shows where El Nino is. You're seeing looking off the coast of uh, Costa Rica here and down here across Central America. This is uh, clearly weakening. It does not appear to be as strong as it did a few weeks back. The trend is weakening at this point. But one of the things that concerns me as I look at the sea surface anomaly map is just how warm it is out here into the Atlantic, especially off the coast of Africa. Of course, as those waves kind of propagate from west to east, they're gonna run into that warmer water. And that will be something that I think will continue as we go deeper into the year. What you're going to notice here with El Nino is we'll start getting some upwelling of cooler water. And you'll start seeing this kind of transition to blue. We'll see cooler temperatures there as we make this pattern shift from El Nino to La Nina. And that's going to have an overall impact on what our summer outlook is going to look like. So as we take a look at what the traditional La Nina pattern looks like across the continental United States, we get a troughiness here in the east. So keep this map in line as you look at it very closely here, uh, where things are going to kind of line up here. So I'm kind of zooming in here a little bit closer. You can see the troughiness is out here into the east. So you've got a uh, uh, better chance of seeing wetter weather across areas of the New England. It noticeably drier here across the south, but one of the kind of wild cards in this is going to be the tropics. Where does this trough set up? If it's deep enough, then maybe it acts as a deflector and all the storms kind of stay off the Atlantic coast and kind of curve out. If the storm path coming up through the Caribbean, then it kind of help can pull tropical systems into the southeast. So as we get into the summertime, I'll be watching closely if this pattern holds where we're going to see the La Nina influence here and when that trough sets up across areas of the eastern third of the United States. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the forecast from the El Nino to La Nina. When is that going to take place? So we're looking here at the latest outlook here uh, from the, the, the climate.gov site here, and you notice the trend of El Nino clearly weakening here. It is going downward. It is losing its punch and being replaced by La Nina which officially gets underway down here around the June-August time frame. Uh, that's when we're expecting La Nina to kick in, and it'll be getting stronger as we go through the tropical season. So what that means for the tropics, obviously, like I'm trying to, to re, re, uh, reinforce here for you, is that we're not going to have the strong upper-level winds. We've already got warm water out in the Atlantic, and we're not going to have the, the shear effect because tropical systems do not like high winds. They like to have all the heat come in at the surface and evacuate out the top like a big chimney. So uh, that is going to mean uh, more favorable conditions in the tropics as we make this transition to La Nina. And I'll show you what the outlook for tropical storms is expecting here just a little bit later. So, all right, let's go ahead and now take a look at the official outlook here. This is the temperature outlook across the United States. Remember the map I showed you there where it was kind of showing cooler temperatures up here into the high plains and it's kind of got equal chance. So it's kind of hitting at uh, a typical La Nina there. But one thing that's I'm catching, that's kind of catching my eye here is that it's including New England here with 
above normal temperatures, that despite the fact that it's expecting increased precipitation chances in that same area. Obviously, we're looking at ridging out here in the west. It's going to be a lot warmer from, say, Washington State down to Arizona and into New Mexico. So obviously, heat waves, we'll have to watch out for that out toward the west. But look at the precipitation outlook. You would think with increased precipitation chances, like they're showing here across areas of New England, that maybe the temperatures would be suppressed down a little bit. Well, that's not the case, at least not showing right now. And of course, the precipitation equal chances all across the southeast can greatly be influenced on how the tropical season develops, especially as we head into August and September, and its influence as far as uh, bringing heavy rains if we're getting landfall systems across the southeast and of course uh, across areas into the mid-atlantic as well so that's something just to watch closely as we get into the summer season and we start to fire out the tropical season which of course officially gets underway on one june for the atlantic hurricane season so going back here again looking at the tropics and this this is the image as of today just for your notification there and again keep in mind when we have an el nino we're talking about a jet stream that's uh, blowing through here more often. So you, you're, get, you're getting a stronger jet, and as these waves kind of propagate across the coast of Africa, they run into that higher jet energy, and it doesn't like that so much. We also had a lot of Sahara dust last year. We'll see if that'll be the case for this year. Now, with that going away, we'll have more stable element out there, and we could see increased hurricane activity. And the last official update for the tropics is looking like this. This was as of, as of December. So this is the latest outlook right now. 20 named storms, nine hurricanes, and four major hurricanes. And we've got a lot of, of uh, definitely a lot of heat energy that they expected to be out in the Atlantic. So when we talk about major hurricanes, we're talking about category three or above, greater than 115 miles per hour for the tropical season coming up for, as far as hurricanes are concerned. So. Uh, that is your summer outlook for right now. Again, we're making that transition from El Nino to La Nina. Uh, so we're looking at the possibility of a more active tropical season. And the bulk of the country is going to be looking at abnormally warm temperatures, unfortunately, for the summer. So your air conditionings may be getting a workout this year. And if you've not tuned up your system, you may want to consider doing that for now. Hey, if you like what you saw, you I really do appreciate you watching. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button if you'd like to become a member of the Weather Nerds family here. Hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you like and tell me what you like to see on this channel as we continue to move forward uh, with our products here. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy. We'll see you on the next edition. Until then, you guys be good and be safe out there. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.